Hey everyone, it's Nate here from FlyPlugins.com and welcome to this tutorial video in which we will be talking about how to set up a WP Courseware training course. Now we're logged into our WordPress admin dashboard here. If we, we have WP Courseware installed and activated, so if we go over to the training courses menu on the left hand side here, we'll see an option to add a course. Now we'll go ahead and click on that. That's going to create a new course for us and you'll see several tabs here which include the settings for each of your WP Courseware courses. So we're going to walk through these individually and talk about them. I actually already have a few courses, uh, example courses set up on this site. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to the training courses listing screen here and go to edit course settings. Now if you ever need to change any uh, course settings for an existing course that you've already created and saved, you can always go back into this menu here and edit any of the current course settings. So we'll see, we're by default taken to the general course details tab. We are required to put in a course title and a course description, uh, and this description will show on the front end. The next setting here is a, is a pretty important one, so pay attention. Uh, we have the option to display all units or only completed next units. Um, so what this means is you can either choose to, with the top option, all units visible. You can choose to allow your students to freely navigate the course. They could visit using unit one, unit 10, it doesn't matter. They could bounce around uh, however they want. If you want them to complete the course in succession, which is what most of our users actually do, select the only completed next units visible option. What that's gonna do is require them to mark unit one as complete before they can access unit two and so on. Now we'll head on over to the user access tab. This is also a pretty important one. If you set this to automatic, anyone who registers for your WordPress site, they will be given access to this course. If you set it to manual, uh, you will be required to manually assign user access under the WordPress user screen. So you can go into that screen and you'll see that you can update user enrollment. So for each of your users, you can manually assign them to certain courses. A lot of you are using membership plugins and e-commerce plugins in conjunction with WP Courseware. So you're, you're getting paid before a user is granted access to a course. If you're using one of our integrations for WP Courseware in a membership or e-commerce plugin, just leave this set to automatic because the integration is going to override these settings anyway. User messages, and as you can see, this is full of front-end messages which display for WP Courseware. So let me walk through these quickly and just explain them. The first one is pretty obvious, this is required. This is the message that a student receives when they complete a unit. So once they mark it as complete, this is gonna pop up. As you can see with a couple of these, HTML is okay. So for example, we have this course completion message down below. We sometimes have uh, WP Courseware users who once a student completes a unit, they wanna include an anchor text link, an HTML link out to uh, uh, another course or a bonus resources page. So you can use HTML within these first couple of fields here. The next is uh, message course complete. Again, pretty self-explanatory. What you want the student to see once they've completed the course this is going to pop up on the, the very last unit for that course. Um, this message unit pending field, this will be what users see when they are visiting a course unit that they have not yet completed. So that's going to display for them on the front end. And that's sort of the direction that you want, to, you want them to mark this unit as complete. These are the instructions for whatever you want to include to finish the unit. Uh, this next message is a new one in version 3.8.5 of WP Courseware and up. It relates to course prerequisites. And we'll talk about that in just a moment because it actually has its own tab within the uh, course settings. But if a student, if you have course prerequisites set up, uh, you require that a student complete one course before moving on to another or starting another. You can provide a custom message here that would display when they try to access the content for the second course and they haven't completed the first one yet. Uh, message access denied. This would be uh, if a user tries to access a course that they've not been enrolled in.
through the default uh, message here, you need to complete the previous unit first. If they try to access unit two and uh, they have not completed unit one, that's what they'll see. Message not unlocked yet. This is for those of you who are going to be using uh, drip feed. So within each course unit, you can choose to drip feed your content at certain intervals. This would be the message that displays if they try to access a course unit which you have not dripped out yet. And as you can see by the default, this message includes uh, a temp template tag here for unit unlock time. So what that will do is if they try to access that unit that's not available yet, it will basically give them a count time, countdown timer as to when it will be available. Uh, message not logged in, obviously that's going to be if your students try to access content but they haven't logged into the site. Uh, we have a couple of messages here related to open questions. So if you are using, within your quizzes, if you are using an open-ended question or a file upload question, as you can see here in the description, your students are going to need to submit that and you, then an instructor will need to grade it for them. So these are the messages that you want to display once they submit that quiz, but it has not been graded yet. And you can see there are a couple of different options for this because uh, we have a uh, blocking mode quiz and we have a non-blocking mode quiz. So if you're gonna allow them to progress anyway in a non-blocking quiz, you may wanna change the message here and customize that. So we'll scroll back up to the top. Our next tab is our email address details. And this is pretty simple. If you choose to send out email notifications within the rest of these tabs here, uh, you're gonna be able to set an email address that those come from. That's what your students are going to see when say they complete a course and they receive an email from you. They'll see that email address. Uh, you can also include a name here that might be specific to your course, maybe your name, whatever you want to use. Um, admin notify email address. This is gonna come into play when you want notifications sent to you about, uh, for example, when a student completes a module, they complete a course, or when you need to manually grade quizzes that include open-ended or file upload question types. So that's a pretty important setting there if you're using those question types. Next, we have a series of email notification tabs. We're gonna click on the first one, which is email notifications for units. Um, this is going to include a message that goes out when students are now able to access any content that you've chosen to drip out. If they've tried to access that unit previously, but it wasn't yet available, they will be added to a queue within the database. And when that uh, unit does become available, the system will fire out an email to that student. Uh, and you can see the various tags that you can use within this. You've got a subject and you have a body for this email. You can customize this however you want. You can see on the, over on the right hand side of the screen here, we have a series of email template tags that we can use. So you can customize this message for uh, drip content that's been released. Next, we have our email notifications module tab. This is going to either send you or the student an email when they complete a module. You can see that uh, module complete notify you is the top setting. You can choose to receive or not receive an email. Uh, additionally, you can do that for the student. And again, you can, uh, you can customize the subject and the body of the email and use our handy email template tags over there um, to customize this however you see fit. The same is going to be the case for the email notifications course tab. This is a very similar, uh, very similar setup and you can customize uh, this just the same way we, we did with the modules. Now we'll visit the email notifications quiz grades tab. This is the email that's going to go out when a, uh, when a quiz has been graded for a student. Now that can happen either automatically if you're using true, false, and multiple choice questions. It's going to be fired out automatically because that, uh, that quiz is going to be graded automatically. Alternatively, if you are using open-ended or file upload question types where the instructor needs to assign a grade manually, this email will go, go out once that, uh, once that final score has been applied to the quiz. So you can turn this on or off. Again, you have the subject in the body. One important point with the uh, quiz grade email notifications is if we scroll down on the right-hand side here in our email template tags meta box, we'll see that we have a separate section for quiz email notifications only. Now you've got a series of um, 
template tags that can be used specifically for your quiz emails. The title, the grade, you can break down grades by question tag if you're using tags in your questions. Uh, the amount of time that it took the student took to complete the quiz if you're timing your quizzes, uh, the number of attempts if you set an attempt limit, if you're using the custom feedback messages within um, the quiz creation, you can include those here and in quiz result detail. Um, so these are a few separate template tags that you can use within this email. Next we'll go over to email notifications final summary. Uh, what happens here is we cover this in the gradebook video for WP Courseware, but once your students complete the course and they receive a final grade, within the gradebook, you have an opportunity to email out final grades. And what that functionality will do is it will send anyone who has not received their final grade yet, but they've completed the course, they're again sort of added to a queue within the database. You click uh, that you want to send final email summaries for any students who have completed the course since the last time you clicked that button, and they will receive this email. So you can customize this quite a bit. Um, if we scroll back down again to the uh, template tag meta box here, we'll see that we have some additional, um, additional options for sending out that final summary notification email, cumulative grade, quiz summary. We can provide a, a breakdown of each of their individual quiz scores, obviously um, name, first name, last name, site name, URL, course title. And finally, if you want to, if you're offering certificates within your course, you can provide a link to the, uh, to the completion certificate within that email, uh, as you can see here. So that's how the email notifications uh, final summary work. Let's now head on over to the certificates tab, which is next here. You can choose whether or not you want to enable certificates for this course or not. If you choose to, once the student completes the course, at the very end of the course in the last unit, they're going to have an option to download their certificate. You can also choose to make this available in the overall course progress shortcode, uh, but you can turn certificates on or off here. Now we cover configuring those in a different video. So if you need, uh, if you need help configuring your certificate, you can go to youtube.com slash fly plugins and just search for certificate. You'll see the tutorial video there. So let's go on over to course access tools. This one's going to be pretty self-explanatory, um, but there are a couple of options here. Let's say you want to reset every single user within a course. Now we've got other videos that cover the various ways that you can reset user progress, including individual user progress in the WordPress user screen. But if for some reason you need to just set everyone back to the beginning of the course, erase their progress, erase their quiz grades, you can do that here. So be careful with that one, I would recommend. Uh, next, we have uh, bulk grant access. So this would be if you if you have um, if you're creating a new course. Let's say we we have a lot of users that they may have five or ten thousand students, and those students are part of a membership program where they get access to every course that's available uh, for one price. And let's say the uh, course uh, course creator decides to build a new course to add additional information, training information. They create a new course. Um, you can choose to uh, to add all of your existing users to a new course here. So let's cover our last tab here, which is course prerequisites. And again, this is new in version 3.8.5 of WP Courseware and higher. Now you can see that we are, we're editing our Facebook marketing course, but we have two other courses that we've created. We have LinkedIn marketing and Twitter marketing. So if we chose to, we could require that a student complete one of these other courses first. But what I have done is, let me head on over to the Twitter course settings here. And I've actually set up a prerequisite for the Twitter course, which requires that the student uh, complete the Facebook marketing course first before they can access the content. Now, I'm logged in as a user here, Fly Admin, and Fly Admin has access to, has been assigned access to both of these courses. Let's take a look. We have Facebook marketing and Twitter marketing. Now, if I flip over to the front end, I'm going to my uh, 
overall course progress outline page here. So I have my courses. I can see that I have uh, access to the Facebook marketing and the Twitter marketing course. I'm gonna open those both up. As you can see with the Facebook marketing course here, I have not completed any of the units. If I try to access the first unit of the Twitter course, I get that message that we talked about earlier that this course cannot be accessed until the prerequisites are complete. So if I go back over, let's just fly through here. Okay, we've completed that course, the Facebook marketing course. We'll head back to the My Courses page, open up the Twitter marketing course, and now we can access unit one. So that's how that works. Uh, so that's how you will set up a new WP Courseware course. As always, please let us know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.